Hey there, fellows. Now, of course, you'll remember the experiments we did with clutch disks, made out of pretty much any material you can imagine. The last one we did was made out of a cutting circle for an angle grinder. That one did the job fairly well. And recently, we've been getting quite a few requests. Well, they were coming in beforehand as well. But the idea is to use conveyor belt to make us a clutch disk. Some people say it's gonna work, others that it won't in a thousand years. They say that in argument the truth is born, but with us, in experiment, the truth is born. So let's go ahead and cut this up, stick it on, fit the disc and try it out. Let's do this. So if you haven't been in our merch shop for a while, we have added a bunch of cool new stuff. Such as these handmade wallets and holders made out of genuine leather. It's a must-have for any dude who needs a reliable and convenient place to keep his documents. We also have an assortment of t-shirts, caps and key fobs with a fresh design. There is a lot to cover, so better you head on over to our shop and check out what we got. For anybody who places an order right now, I'll slip in a card with my picture and my personal autograph. Make sure to use PayPal to pay for your order, so that it goes through with no issues. Add something new to your collection of Garage 54 merch, and receive a card with my autograph. So head on over to our online shop, and the link of course is gonna be in the description. We make a rubber clutch disc, will it work? Translation and voiceover by BMI Russian. Okay, so check this out, guys. We've stuck the material on in the oven, it was able to cope with the temperature, and the glue is now cured. 107% rest assured that the conveyor belt will effectively cling to the clutch disc. Now, the disc itself is on the thick side, since we weren't able to find conveyor belt that's any thinner. I mean, it's already quite thin as it is. But then we do have a flywheel that has been slightly machined down. You'd remember how the ceramic tile clutch was also really thick, and we compensated for that by machining the flywheel. That's the one we'll be using this time around, with how thick the clutch disc turned out to be. And so now the flywheel is in position, the clutch disc is ready, and so we can start the testing now. We've got everything in place, it's all looking good. If I shine a light from here, I can even see a bit of the disc. We have a convenient little window for peeking inside. The disc is looking nice and fresh, and now it's on to the testing. What do you guys think? Is it gonna work? Let's try it out. Starting the car. Well, it sounds alright. I don't hear any adverse noises. No matter if I press it in or release it. Okay, let's try this out. What made the squealing noise, the tires or the clutch? Now it does feel jittery, but the grip is there. And I do this smoothly. Now it is very jittery. And now we're vibrating. What is that all about? And I can really feel it jerking around. Perhaps the conveyor belt is uneven. As in the... thickness varies. 
Okay, so I just released it and it's good. Either pushed in or released, it works very well. The engine is hesitating with it still being a bit cold. But what is up with the clutch? I feel like it might be sticking. Because even when I press it in, it still jerks around when I hit the gas. As soon as I apply a bit more throttle, everything seems to normalize, and the car no longer lunges forward. Now, of course, the wheels are gonna spin in this scenario. Yeah, it's gotta be sticking pretty aggressively in there. And now I can't get it into gear. Doesn't want to go in. Will you look at that? Oh, come on, let go. I see him. Let me try. So, when I start the car with the transmission already in gear, the car is staying put. Oh, good, no more jerkiness. And there's the smell of burnt rubber. Why is it doing that? Yeah, I think we'd better make the rod a bit longer, because this just won't do. Get out of the way! Hmm, stood in place that time. It takes releasing it quite substantially for the car to get moving. Yeah, it really does seem to be sticking. That's obviously what's happening here. Let me push it in. So I have it all the way in. And when I press the gas, there's even a bit of wheel spin. This isn't working too well. And there's a lot of pedal travel. So I have it all the way in again. I hit the gas and the wheels are spinning. Do you realize what's going on? How do I unstick it? I'm gonna try... doing a burnout. Nope. I've got the gas and brake pedals pressed at once. And I can't get the damn thing loose. Can you imagine? I think it might have even melted on permanently. Hey, I mean... Okay, I'm in gear. Press the clutch. And away we go. This is pretty annoying. So we have just adjusted the clutch fork travel in order to make the plate move away further. I mean, there's obviously going to be a limit to it because, well, you ought to know that when you adjust it for too much travel, you severely increase the load, to the point where the throwout bearing even starts to squeal. Anyway, we've been pressing down on the fork with a crowbar, and as you can see, the gap between the pressure plate and the friction disc is fairly healthy. We got it all unstuck, and now it's time for us to head out and drive some more. Things should go much better this time around. Okay, the car is running. Oh, for God's sake. Even after we increase the travel, it's still doing the same thing. Okay, I guess we run it like this then. You guys do realize what's happening, right? I've got the clutch and brake pedals in. Oh, now it's unstuck. So apparently it's not enough to make sure it's not contacting the disc. The pressure plate, I mean. 
Now it's all the way up, and I can hear it whistling. Still works, though. No feels all right. Check that out. It stinks, though it is definitely slipping. When I release the clutch, there is a bit of slip at first, but then it engages. Anyway, I suggest we get this onto a lift again and slightly shorten the rod in order to get the pressure plate to clamp down a bit harder. Okay, let's see what's up. Might have been a bit premature. Or maybe not. It is coming to a stop when I press the brake. Perhaps I should try and... roast it a bit. I don't want to release it and allow it to stick. Yeah, I guess that's how you do it. To ensure at least a tiny gap forms. What a lovely steering wheel. It is what it is. Wow, it is very eager to stick. Oh, great, it went into gear. Such abrupt engagement. As if we we're running a ceramic clutch. Yeah, so obviously... And it's stuck once again. Look at that, the clutch. Or maybe not. Well, it works. While the transmission is in gear, everything is all right. But as soon as I try to set off, release the clutch, press the pedal one more time and the car continues to move. You need to use the brakes to tear it off the flywheel, to keep it from sticking. Then again, I'm not exactly sure what it's sticking to. In any case, you need to unstick it for the car to stay put. Giving it a bit of gas. And there it goes again, with the clutch pressed in. I hit the brakes and the car stalls. Great, the disc is stuck once again. Nah, guys, a rubber clutch. Wow, I literally just heard it coming loose. Rolling back from the incline, the clutch disengages. When I'm feathering it, I can't quite set off smoothly. You can't get a good transition with the rubber having gotten so hot. Oh man, why'd I have to release it? Now I won't get it back in. For crying out loud. I guess this is the only way. And it's unstuck. So the only way to disengage the clutch is to slam the car into a hill. Rolling back. I think it's pretty obvious. It sets off very abruptly. As soon as you give it just a little... What can I even say? It works all right when you're putting along in a straight line. You can get up to speed, row through the gears if you want to, without even all too much trouble. Reverse, there we are. Very nice. 
Tremendous. So at the end of the day, this works absolutely terribly. Now I suggest we remove the gearbox and see what's up. Exactly what I was talking about. The gearbox is off, and the pressure plate... We've removed the bolts. But separating it from the flywheel... It's not coming off. What if I try it this way? Yeah, it is stuck onto the rubber good. Will you look at that. Come on, let go. I see. This is very hard. Oh, great, it's coming off. Lovely. There we go. Oh, wow. Holy cow. Obviously, there's material stuck to it. It has gotten sticky because of the high temperatures. You can see the leftover material on the pressure plate. It is soft, but that's because it's still warm. Bless you. Bless you, damn it. And it's the same story on the flywheel. There's the rubber stuck to it. It's still pretty hot. Okay, so apparently it was sticking to the pressure plate more. So it was mostly this side then. Let me try something. Not bad. <laughs> Rubber obviously doesn't have any magnetic properties, so that's it sticking. It even left an imprint. So yeah, it got warm and melted. It wasn't necessarily molten rubber, but it was very sticky for sure. So that concludes the experiment then. Rubber doesn't really work for a clutch pressure plate. And that's all I got for you. Watch us, subscribe, send in your suggestions, comment, give us a big thumbs up. All right, catch you later.